Marimo and the Lost Chain. All right, third graders, it's time to revisit this big word that we learned last week, metacognition. Think about your thinking while you listen to this story. How do your thoughts compare to the text? Remember, thinking about your thinking and what the author has to say is where real reading happens. What a beautiful day, thought Mermo as he arrived at City Hall. Fresh snow glistened on the lawns and ice-covered trees sparkled in the sunshine. Mermo got an idea. He began to roll the snow into giant balls. In no time, he had built a snow mirror. Mermo decorated it with ornaments and finery so that everyone would see this was no ordinary snowman, but a fine snow sculpture of the mayor himself. Feeling pleased with his creation, Mermo went inside and took off his coat. But when he looked in the mirror to admire his bright orange fur, he got a shock. His chain of office was missing. Mermo turned his pockets inside out, peered into his hat and his coffee mug, and dumped his wastebasket onto the floor. No chain. It must have been stolen. What else could explain its absence? Police, police, he shouted. In a flash, Officer Bluestein was in the mayor's office. What's wrong, your worship? I have been robbed. My chain of office has disappeared. Someone here in City Hall has stolen it. Where is everyone? We have to search the lot of them. Officer Bluestein thought the counselors were likely to be found at their desks in council chambers, so he and the mayor marched right in. Counselors, exclaimed the mayor, my chain of office has been stolen and everyone in this room is a suspect. That's not fair, squeaked Counselor Bug. How could I be a suspect? I couldn't hide the chain, it's bigger than I am. But no one was listening to her. Right said Miramo, turning to Officer Bluestein. Let's start with you, empty your pockets. Me? Officer Bluestein looked confused. But I am an officer of the law. How could I be a suspect? You were in City Hall when the chain went missing. Besides, said Miramo, if you didn't steal it, you wouldn't mind showing us what's in your pockets. I would too mind, said Officer Bluestein, but a glare from Miramo soon had him emptying his pockets. Out came the ratty old teddy bear that he had owned since he was small. Everyone in the council chambers giggled. What was a big police officer doing with a tiny teddy bear? No one would be able to look at Officer Bluestein in quite the same way after this. How mortifying. Stop and think for a minute. Do you agree with what Mayor Mo is saying right now? Why or why not? Share your thoughts with your teacher. Next up was Counselor Fuzz. The only thing he had in his pocket was a moldy old toothbrush. Ew, said everyone when they saw it. Counselor Fuzz blushed a deep blue and looked down. Counselor Feather tried to hide a big bag of laundry she had planned to drop off at the cleaners that afternoon, but Mayor Mo spotted the bag and made Officer Bluestein dump it out. Counselor Feather covered her eyes with her wings and squawked sadly, while the other counselors snickered at her pile of smelly socks and rumpled shirts. But when Counselor Quackley was told to open her purse, she simply refused. What's the problem? demanded Mermo. Do you have something to hide? No, said Counselor Quackley. Some things are just private. You have no reason to think I have the chain, so you have no right to search me. Let's stop and activate our schema and let's exercise that muscle we call our brain. Text to self connection time. How would you feel if you were Counselor Feather? Stop and share your thoughts with your teacher. In her purse, Officer Bluestein took Counselor Quackley by the wing and escorted her out of the council chamber with Mayor Mo and the rest of the counselors following to see what would happen. I'm afraid I must take you to the police station, Officer Bluestein apologized. Counselor Bug's tail light flashed on and off as she squeaked, that's not fair. Counselor Quackley has done nothing wrong. We all have the right to privacy. You can't have her arrested just because you are nosy, Mayor Mo. She hasn't broken a law. Could this situation with Counselor Quackley have been handled differently? Explain. On the steps of City Hall, they were met by the usual gaggle of reporters and photographers 
They all wanted to know what Counselor Quackley had done. As the crowd moved down the stairs, Officer Bluestein noticed the snow mare that Mayor Moe had built that morning. Why? It looks like the Mayor Moe in every detail. It even has a chain of, wait a minute. Officer Bluestein reached over and brushed the snow off the mayor's chain of office. With a glare, he handed it to Mayor Mo. Oh, my, m- m- stammered Mayor Mo. I, I guess I put the chain there this morning just to complete the look. You must admit I did a pretty good job, too. Well, sorry about that. And you should be, quacked Counselor Quackley. You had no right to search us. If a dangerous snake had gotten loose, it would have been a different story, but no one could have been hurt by a lost chain. Hmm, mused Mayor Moe, staring at Counselor Quackley's bag. You can't be too careful, you know? Officer Bluestein surreptitiously took his teddy bear out of his pocket and gave it a little cuddle. What if Counselor Quackley did have a dangerous snake in her bag? Should he still search it? Now that the mystery behind the chain has been solved, how do you think Mayor Moe should have handled this situation? Stop and talk to your teacher for a moment. No unreasonable searches. In democracies, police or other authorities cannot legally invade your privacy by searching you or your stuff, at least not without a very good reason to do so. Simply being curious, nosy, or suspicious is not a good enough reason for them to search through anyone's private things. But some people say that if you haven't done anything wrong, you shouldn't mind others looking through your belongings. What do you think? And can you think of a reason that would be good enough to search people even if they prefer to keep their stuff private? Do you think that searching all the counselors was fair? And here's where the video stops. And-